Do you feel like you don't belong in this world? Have you tried to escape the madness of this world? Well, you're not alone. Let's take a look at how a 9th century Taoist and Zen master dealt with the insanity of this world. There is a Zen and Taoist master from the 9th century that many people don't know about. His name was simply Han Shan, which when we translate it into English means cold mountain. Now, Han Shan is lesser known. I don't know why, because his poetry is some of the most transformative readings you'll ever read. And there are many great translations of cold mountain. Preferably, there is uh, Burton Watson's translation, Red Pines, and also Gary Schneider's. There are also other translations, but those three I highly recommend. And the poetry of Han Chan is amazing. It, like I said, it's transformative. It almost documents his own life of dealing with the madness and insanity of the world that many of us have to deal with on an everyday basis. But Han Shan had a radical way of dealing with this because he went and resided to Cold Mountain, to Han Shan, and that's where he lived out his days to escape society. And so I want to read to you a couple of verses from that today to get an idea into the mind of Han Shan and also to how sincere we are on the spiritual path. Now, that doesn't mean we have to go up into the mountains and escape society, but it does highlight the fact that we do live somewhat in an insane world. And a lot of us do willingly give in to this world, but Han Shan saying no and highlighting the fact that it is important to follow the spiritual path no matter the measures we have to take. So let's have a look at what Han Shan has to say. In my first 30 years of life, I traveled hundreds of thousands of miles along rivers where the green rushes swayed, to the cities where the red dust swirled. I brewed elixirs in a vain search for immortality. I've read the classics and written odes, and now I've retired to Cold Mountain to lie in the stream and wash out my ears. So as you see in this verse, Cold Mountain had tried everything. He even went to the length of brewing elixirs, you know, like Taoist tonic elixirs to try and search for immortality. And then in the last sort of line, he mentions about sitting beside the stream and washing out his ears. Now, there are other translations that will say wash the red dust out of his ears. Now, what this is alluding to is not that his ears are dirty, obviously. It's that there was red dust in the cities back in the old days. There could be a lot of red dust in certain cities throughout China. And so this is more metaphorical, really, because it's kind of describing the busyness of society. So what Han Shan here is doing is cleansing his mind and his soul from all everything that it has had to endure within the world and society. Now, to back this up, there's another verse in the Han Shan that will explain this more in detail. The world is full of busy people, well-versed in countless views, blind to their true natures. They get farther from the way. And so Han Shan here explains that in residing in the city in his time, a lot of people get so engrossed in the busyness of life and their own individual concerns that they forget the Tao, they forget the way, right? Does that sound familiar? <laughs> because in the world today, obviously people are getting further and further and further away from the Tao. As Lao Tzu mentions time and again in the Tao Te Ching, that we are forgetting the Tao. The more we become busy, the more we fill our mind up full of useless information and noise, where we don't have a lot of time for peace and quiet, we get further and further away from the Tao to the point where a lot of people just believe the Tao is some sort of metaphysical woo-woo principle when actually it's a living reality right now in your present life, but a lot of us can't see it because we're so busy, right? And so Han Shan says that a lot of people in the city are so well-versed in countless views, they're so busy and so forth and so on, but they don't know their fundamental nature. They are actually blind to their true nature, Han Shan says. And that reminds us of our own world, right? Even in the present day, Han Shan would roll in his grave if he could see 
how the world is now. Because when he's saying that they were well versed in countless views back in the ninth century, imagine if you saw the world today. I mean, people have so many opinions about how the world should be, what their beliefs are, and so forth and so on. And it's all based on a subjective viewpoint, one's own conditioning. And this is what eclipses the Tao, the presence of the Tao within you, because you've got all of these countless views, pointless views in some sense, and these opinions of how the world should be. And you base this all on your own conditioning, the busyness of your own life, and then you have no time for spirituality and understanding the nature of consciousness itself, which is one of the most unfortunate things one could ever ever go through not have a sense of spirituality not have a yearning to understand the nature of consciousness and so hanshan had to leave the society right he had enough and so he had to go up into cold mountain to be engrossed in his own spirituality and to reconnect with the Tao. that's the length he went to we don't have to go to the mountain though we can find it where we are now But as Han Chan alluded to, we need to slow our life down. Our life is too fast. And especially with the internet, since the advent of the internet, life has become so busy. It's so, so busy. Anything from just doing banking to just shopping has become so busy. Whereas back in the old days, and I'm talking only just like 10 to 15 years ago, people still had to go to the bank. They still had to go and physically buy things and it was an event in and of itself but now we can just sit at home and just bang 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 and just do everything and then we create this artificial busyness and we create these artificial needs that we don't really need at all right and so in doing so we get further and further and further away from the Tao and so when you read Cold Mountain you when you read Han Chan it's about slowing your life down, almost to a, a slow meditative walk, right? Han Chan's saying that even in his time it was so busy, imagine if he could see it today. And so it's about living the slow, slow life, right? It's not just about slowing your life down, it's about being dedicated to slowing your life down to a point where that you can constantly feel and understand the presence of Tao within all things. And that's the problem in the world today because we've lost a connection with that. And as Lao Tzu says in the Tao Te Ching, once we've forgot that, then anything in the world can happen, right? All sorts of conflict can happen. All sorts of confusion can happen when we've lost the presence of the ultimate reality within our life. And so that's what Han Shan is pointing us to in this passage. He's telling us to slow our life down, particularly if we are dedicated to the spiritual path, right? A lot of people talk about bodhicitta, the energy and enthusiasm one has for the spiritual path as a practice in and of itself. And Han Shan is a good example of that. He was so dedicated that he even went up into the mountains. Now, I'm not recommending that for any of you to do, but it's an inspiration for all of us in our everyday life when we read someone like Han Shan. So I hope you guys get inspired to read Cold Mountain. And I hope that this has given you some sort of solace on the path that there were great sages in the ancient times who understood exactly what you understand when you look at society and you look at how mad and insane the world can be. But remember, you always have a choice. And Han Shan is telling us the choice is to reverse our busy motion back to the point of stillness where we find the nature of the Tao waiting for all of us. Shanti, shanti, shanti.